hibernate no I keep ignoring fate no I put things off for a while Why I always drag my feet, it's just not my style Evans, the Milwaukee Music Examiner, and Richard Paul Thomas. Richard came all the way here from Texas. Now, what part of Texas are you from? It's a little town called Salado. It's about an hour north of Austin. Have you ever played in Austin? Oh, yeah, a lot. A lot of different places. They have a lot of music festivals down there, don't they? Yes, constant. Of course, I just came from Milwaukee. It seems like it's festival city. This oh, time. yeah. <laughs> Summerfest is yeah. the largest music festival in the world, believe yeah. it or not. Now, uh, Question I wanted to ask you, you said you had a little bit of influence from Buddy Holly? Yeah, I mean, I, I started playing guitar when Buddy Holly was still alive, so it's been a while. Um, but like, you know, people like the Everly Brothers, Roy Orbison, Buddy Holly, and obviously the Beatles, Stones, Moody Blues, you know. I mean, Did you else. ever get to see any of those performers? Um, Roy Orbison and the Everly, Everly Brothers I did, but Buddy Holly passed away when I was pretty young, so. Oh, yeah. well, the Everly Brothers, that had to be an amazing show. It was. And we do have... Everly Brothers and Roy Orbison albums in here, believe it or not. Now, Richard, your friends have a nickname for you? Yeah, RPT, Richard Paul Thomas. It just it was easier, I guess. <laughs> Is that your stage name, or do you go on? I do both. doesn't make any difference. Yeah, I'll answer to what anybody calls me, pretty much. Now, would you tell us a little bit about your genre of music? Or... Well, um, I like so many different kinds of music, so I really write in a lot of different styles, and I kind of let the song take whatever direction it's going to be, rather than forcing it to be in one thing or another. So that kind of makes it a little difficult, because people say, what kind of things do you do? And I go, well, I play music. You know, I write songs and I play. So. Richard, what would you consider your biggest successful song in your career? Um, right now, the one that's getting the most attention is the No Excuse one. Right. Yeah. We love No Excuse. Yeah. Are you going to be playing that for us today? Yeah, I can do that. Oh, yeah. I would really yeah. enjoy that. We had done a song years ago that was a part of a Cousteau film, Jacques Cousteau film, called Ocean Bird. That was success. That was good. And then we've had some, some, there's a song called Steel Bridge that actually got a lot of attention years and years ago. So. Oh, I'm good. really fascinated by the fact that you said you used to do some film and work with Jack Cousteau? Yeah, I didn't do much film. I produced the environmental festival. They do environmental festivals across the country, and I would come in and actually set up the offices and produce the whole show with, with a team. And then... Uh, uh, and those were music festivals? They were film and music festivals, and they, what he would do is he'd bring in all the environmental groups, and they would talk about what's going on with their, their you know, non-profit things. That they're doing. I'm not really familiar with the environmental groups, per se. Could you... Give me a little bit of an example. What kind uh, of like Greenpeace, the Green one, Peace, you know, okay. Greenpeace, and there's just a lot of, them, you know, hundreds of them really. And so we bring in all the local people that were doing things. I'm not sure there's probably some environmental issues here in, in Wisconsin, you know, with with regard to, you know, uh, I think mining for sand. I was talking to somebody. The other wow. Day. Sand mining is a big issue because they use sand to do fracking, and and so there's all sorts of cons. You know, wow, that's really interesting. There. Now, at this point in your career, what where do you see yourself in five years? Well, um, boy, that's an interesting question. I wind up, I'm doing things that I want to do right now. So I just continue, I guess, doing the things the way I want to do. I perform when I want to. I record when I want to. I work with a lot of young songwriters. Oh, awesome. Um, you know, produce shows. We produced environmental festivals, Earth Day and things. So we're doing what we're doing. So where I want to be is just more of what I'm doing right now. What I was really interested in, you were telling me earlier, in Texas there's a program where they're helping some of the veterans and soldiers write music? Yeah, there's a group, and I wish I could think of the name of the gentleman that's running it, but they actually work with some soldiers that have the disabilities and the PTSD. The PTSD, yeah. yes. And they actually, they're getting them to write songs, a lot of them that helps them get their emotions out and get them back on track. So that's kind of, great therapy. Yeah. Uh, we here work with a veteran of the year, Jerry Payne, with the United States Entertainment Force, mm -hmm. and we schedule a lot of entertainment for the military, and we would love to get involved in that program. I'll get your uh, name. And yeah. you said you live right by Fort Hood? Yep, yep. Just so you're seeing soldiers every day? Constantly. I mean, that's like 40, 50,000 people there. Did you ever serve in the military yourself? No, I did not. I was talking about that yesterday. I was drafted. Okay. And the day that I was, the day before I was supposed to leave, I got a kidney stone. So wow. So they, you know, pulled me out on that. And then when I finally got, I got drafted again, just before they had, they had a lottery. You know, and I oh, was, I didn't know that. Yeah, there was a lottery back then. Okay. So I wound up number three thirty-three. So I wound up not going. My brother was in Nam and a lot of other.
So I bet 333 is your lucky number. That's a pretty you know? good number, yeah. That's a pretty good number. Right. But, you know, a lot of times we serve our military mm -hmm. many different ways, mm -hmm. you know, such as you doing these environmental fests yeah. and working with the vets who need the music therapy and such. Yeah. So we thank you for that, mm -hmm. and we thank you for driving all the way here. How many miles did you cover to get here? Uh, well, it was 1,156 to Milwaukee to my brother's house, and I put on probably a few, quite a few hundred since then, since I've been around this area. Real quick, you said you lived in the Milwaukee area for 30 uh -huh. years. Why did you relocate to Texas? Um, divorce. Okay. <laughs> and I got this job working for Cousteau, so I went to awesome. Texas. I left Milwaukee, and it was 26 below zero. Oh, my goodness. I got to Houston, it was 69. Oh, wow. I was my home. lucky number was home. of the year I was born. I was home. <laughs> so that's wonderful. Thank you so much Thank for you. coming, and we look so forward to your show right okay, now. Thank you. Okay. Why do I procrastinate? No excuse. I know I reconcile. Why? 